Thank you, <laughs> San Diego. And thanks for coming out, really. This, this, um, you guys are really terrific. So after many decades of trying to come down here, I finally get the opportunity. <laughs> so, so really, thank you so much. It, it won't be the last time. Um, Excellent. I mean, you've, you've had such an illustrious career. I mean, you're one of the most recognizable character actors we have and from films like Rush Hour and TV, like 24, and one of my favorite recent movies, Arrival. Um, but what does it mean for you with that kind of resume to be in a film like this, um, a kind of a smaller indie film, but where you get to play a lead? Fortunate. It's <laughs> what it, you know, I, I think um, you work and you, you put your best work that you know how to put forward. But to be involved in a story that is a story that's telling you about you is really important. And, and, and to really share with, with your own community you know, the struggles of being uh, uh, an immigrant family, uh, our trials and tribulations and what we go through what life brings and, and your struggles and your, your joys and all of those, you know, mixed bag of life that you're able to bring, which I don't think I can get to do this in any other circumstance, really. You know, because we as, as uh, Asian Americans or North American Asians don't really get a chance to, to show us, show ourselves that we are part of the fabric of this society. So a lot of times, we are always portrayed as foreigners. We are perpetual foreigners. But we've been here for many, many generations. So I, I think you know, when you tell these kind of stories, it, it brings the community together. And, and we, we begin to at least see, hey, our neighbors are actually as Americans as we are. And we go through the same experiences that, that we share. There's a universality of what we do and go through. So this is a real pleasure and a, and a gift. Thank you, Mina. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say that um, for me, it is the, what I was trying to do with the, the all, all the work we did on the characters and the, and the story, it is, a, it is heroes of hu who are human. There is no, to me, a, Yes, it is my world. It is the, the world I know well. Maybe I'm a lazy fiction writer. I just set everybody in the background of the, of the world that I know. But I think that I, I don't see why T Bing's journey is not every person. I think of everybody in the movie as every person, like every man, like in, in, in literature, you know. Um, because why can I go see a movie with uh, Ryan Gosling in it and feel everything Ryan goes through, even though it's not my experience. I've never been in a spaceship before. Why, why can't he, Ryan Gosling, or the world see that Maria or Bing's experience is also theirs? Like that's, I think I'm trying, I, I wanna redefine what hero is. What does a hero look like? What stories matter? That was pretty, pretty good, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, so, so. Spread the word. It's on Netflix now. We um, we just sold it to Netflix, uh, US, UK, Australia. So tell everybody. Yeah. yeah. We're really grateful to the festivals because it's the communities that first get the word out. So talk about it. If you like it, drink, you know, when you're at the water cooler. I saw this film. It's on Netflix. Well, one of the things I cherish so much about it, and um, Ty talks about being the perpetual foreigner, and so often you're in a film, you have to speak Chinese, but I love hearing Chinese in this yeah. movie. I love yeah. the mix of English and Chinese. To me, that's what my household sounds like. And I assume every household, every immigrant household, is a little bit different in terms of who speaks Chinese to who, who speaks mm. English to. Can you talk about writing in different languages and how much of that was scripted when you were, and, and did you follow the script? Yeah, the choices of language and where language changed uh, was very deliberate. Uh, I remember we had a moment where we were like, don't you just love Cantonese, the way they phrase things, and you, oh, because my trans, uh, the person who helped me translate, I speak Cantonese, but not well enough to write it. And so I had a translator, Lin Lee, and she chose the most beautiful, the right, the right tones, the certain sayings that um, really brought out the, my love of the language, the, the, the sounds, the guttural of the language. And then um, 
Bing's lover speaks uh, Mandarin only. And because uh, Maria's character's Mandarin's not very good, they, they're forced to speak this English together. So they find a common bridge because of being separate, right? So um, that was very deliberate. I did that, that was beautiful. And real, because you, you see the, the, the new influence is a, a very Mandarin dominated, you know? So a lot of times you really don't, you, you, you neglect the other Chinese languages. I don't even call them dialects anymore, because you really can't understand the other guy if you speak in a different dialect, right? Oh. But it's really another language. And, and I just hope that we don't rely so much in everything, you know, in just the Mandarin dialect, because we're much more colorful than that. You mentioned Bing's lover, who I think is one of the most fascinating characters in the film. I mean, she doesn't have a huge role, but the way you, kind of, you humanize her, you, you could have easily made her a cliche. Can you talk about how you decided to portray her as a character? Well, all the women in, well, all the, everyone in the film, uh, I hoped to treat them with some compassion. So it was important for me to, like you're talking about powerless, right? Maria is powerless. How is, how is Ava, her daughter, powerless? What's her relationship? And then what's, her name's G, the character, the lover. We never hear her name, but um, for, for G, she's come here, she has no one, she's getting on with her life, and she finds someone who'll take care of her. It, and makes her feel beautiful. And of course, like for me, it's, it's uh, every character has their heartfelt reasons for doing everything. Um, and that, that, that Maria's character and G at the end of the movie too, they have that moment where, where she goes, you know, I came to this country this way and, and you can feel Maria feeling for her. So, um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and speaking of Maria, um, I mean, as a Shaw Brothers fan, <laughs> to, to be able to see Chung Fei Fei, who I know from such class, like 1960s wuxia classics, and of course as the villain in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, um, she's usually known for being so strong, and in this film, she's vulnerable and she's insecure. What was it like kind of getting that performance out of her? That is, I think, 40 years of her life she's putting into that. She's a phenomenal um, actor, a presence. It was funny, because the first thing when I asked her to be in the movie was her, her manager said, <laughs> okay, she wants to do it, she loves it, but she can't ride a bike and she doesn't want to learn how. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Come drink with me. How many people does she kill in Come Drink With Me? And she can't ride a bike. So she does not ride a bike and it's the magic of cinema that we get her daughter, Jennifer, looking like she's riding a bike uh, instead of her. So, um, And she's a workhorse, man. Like, she, remember her on set? Yeah, <laughs> Pepe has a different set of work ethics than us. What? You know, we're, we're, we're like, you know, we're, we're Americans, man, you know. <laughs> you know, we chill, you know, we, we, we go and back to the trailer and chill, but she's on set all the time. She, I mean, I think her stand-in was not very happy because she never got to stand in. Baby was saying, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and she just, she really, I mean, it's really, uh, I'm not quite sure how, real, I've never worked on, on the other side of the ocean. Uh, that's tough for me. I mean, if I had to do that, but I, I don't think that's the case. But I she think likes she's, she, she likes it. She doesn't want to leave set because yeah. she don't want to miss anything. So it's kind of an interesting way of working. She, she would literally stand there for so long while we were tweaking something that my director of photography, who, this is our fourth feature together, Peter Wunstorf and I, he, he would come up to me and he'd go, you have to move Pepe, she's actually in the way now. <laughs> like, you know, because a stand-in, you could just kick them over, right? But it's right. like, that's your lead. <laughs> so, move her, move her, you know. Uh, yeah, she was, she was so dedicated. It was, it was great. I'm sure there's some questions from the audience, right in the middle. Where does the red wine and soda come from? <laughs> no, you mean red wine and Coke specifically, because that's just gross. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I was at a dinner with my Chinese family, and one of the uncles on the brother-in-law side, that's what he was feeding everyone, because he learned it on a Beijing business trip. It's, it's, it was the cool thing to drink, 
And every time he offered, I haven't tried it, I'm allergic to wine, but every time he said it, I would, I would go like this. And just imagine, <laughs> mm, red wine. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's where it comes from. <laughs> we, you know, hey. <laughs> we good actors, man. We, we, we go with the flow. <laughs> But here's an interesting, here's an interesting uh, 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 tidbit about Coke and red wine. <laughs> Zach Santiago, who's the son-in-law, brilliant actor, wonderful performers, he said that's what they do in Spain. Yeah. So hey, we ain't alone in this. <laughs> so Coke and red wine, try it. You know, it yeah. Depends on what red wine you're drinking with the Coke. <laughs> I think so. Um, he said it was the training alcohol for kids in Spain. Yeah, so red wine. <laughs> uh, right here. Why does the Bane character oh. feel like he's such a loser at oh. the end? <laughs> Good. Do you have a couple hours? You know, yes, I mean, life is complex. It's not so simple, you know? I mean, he comes and, and he feels that he's giving his whole life to the, that's right, in the back. You know, nope. I thought I heard a kid. <laughs> uh, I, I think what happens is, you know, you, you come to a certain point in your life where you, you examine everything, right? And then you have this catalyst that just happened. And the catalyst is a breakup. So it shades all your, 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 your thinking. You're looking through this prism of, of depression. <laughs> That's what he's going through. He's he's having a de he's he's depressed, you know. And 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 because of that, I think it triggers all these things about things that he may have suppressed for many decades. And when it bubbles up to the surface, uh, you have to deal with it one way or the other. And so he feels that he's a failure. He's not like his dad, you know. And then meanwhile, everybody comes after him, feels the same way. Like, we're not as good as dad, you know? But meanwhile, every generation have their own journey. And we have own, our own contributions, you know? So don't feel ever, you know, you shouldn't ever really feel inadequate about, you know, you're not as good as the previous generation. I mean, we go through our own journeys, you know? So the question is, where's Charlie? <laughs> Uh, Charlie does. Char Charlie is a ghost in the film, in a way. We never see him, because if you saw him, you would start to imbue him with a personality, a traits. You'd start, I like him, I don't like him. Instead, this way, he is just the loss, the gaping hole. Um, so it's very deliberate that we don't see Charlie. Although my brother was walking around at the Toronto Film Festival, uh, at the world premiere of the movie going, hi, I'm Charlie, I'm the Charlie character. I'm the one that she never films. She never talks about me. She only refers to me like just, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's brilliant, you know, what she did with Charlie. So, have you guys ever seen uh, Raise the Red Lantern? Yeah. This, okay, when you, it's a really classic Chinese film and with Gong Li and, and, and Zhang Yimou, I think was the director. Yeah. You never see the man. You see a shadow of the man. You see like in silhouette. It's all about the women. So Charlie is kind of that guy that you, you, th you throw all your imagination. You could be, Charlie could be anyone you want. I thought that's like really kind of cool, you know? Right? I mean, best actor ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all it's all you. <laughs> you know, so, so th yeah. Is that also why you decided to, to end the film when you did, as opposed to the, the eventual reunion or whatever it might be? Yeah, I, I didn't want the story to take f away from the focus that it was Maria's empowerment. Because then we would have had a, gone to the wedding, thought about this, th was she there to serve her son? Instead, she's on the boat and it's her own moment. Although, I have, if I had had f five million more dollars, I might have shot a scene where she approached the wedding, but just in a wide shot. I wouldn't even let you see the sun. Uh, I, I still wouldn't show Charlie. <laughs> uh, but I would have maybe shown a, like a, uh, a wedding on an island, kind of arty. The banquet, right? The ba yeah. yeah the 
the food, maybe sort of something of Dylan's taste in it, you know, something to, to but uh, that would have cost $5 million and I didn't have that. So, <laughs> does anybody w have any guesses on why it's called Meditation Park? The, the park? Did you notice there's a park in the movie? Yeah, so it's the park. It's that simple, it's not that deep. <laughs> it's the park. But I, you know, but also, I, I guess it is a little deep in that I want, there is a meditation park in that neighborhood. I live in that neighborhood. Um, but also, I wanted us to all be in meditation park together in the movie and to think about our relationship with each other, with ourselves, and where we're headed, personally and um, uh, holistically. The question is a choice to have the children get married to non-Chinese people. It was a, a matter of showing the diversity. Di th th that happens a lot. Like, I've been in a room in Vancouver where everyone, th like, there's three mixed couples. Um, so I feel like it's a something of the kind of reconciliation of everything. Uh, yeah, that's that's what that was about. Did you base any of the traits for the characters off people you knew and anyone in real life? They all seem very eccentric, but all almost instantly recognized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, I filter all sorts of little things when you when you write, but then it is fiction too. So, um, but for sure, like there's I've watched this film and gone, oh, you just stole that person's backstory and made it into dialogue. Hope they don't get mad at me. <laughs> you know, like to actually write their story into the movie. But my family's used to it, so they can't. They can't. They're kind of used to it now. So, um, yeah, I, I think you. I think we all filter a little bit of ourselves when we work. I mean, when you're. When you're Not me. <laughs> I just act what I read. <laughs> <laughs> he just did it very, you know, by the book. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. There's, there's the, the, all the stories are stories I've, I've heard, of women not um, saying anything, that uh, rather than sacrificing um, the relationship, they would just rather live in quiet desperation. I guess, you know, it's a sacrifice. I was kidding, of course, but yes, you always have little pieces of you in the film. Otherwise, you know, you you wouldn't be moved. So everything that you, you, if you felt moved, then we also were moved by those moments as well. So when you're not, then you, you know, we're bullshitting you, so. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> well, Mina, since you've done multiple films with Sandra Oh, I've always assumed that maybe she was some kind of alter ego or maybe there's something about her that you kind of saw yourself in. Do you want to elaborate on this? Well, I, I, I joke that she's my De Niro if I'm Scorsese. <laughs> Uh, uh, and I'm not, I'm kind of not joking, because she's a heavyweight, like De Niro. I mean, she's amazing. Um, I always often will think of her when I'm writing something. So um, if there's a question I have or something I'm working out, I, I some, I'll, it's, it's, I'm channeling sort of her version of who, because Ava's neither me nor Sandra, the character, but there, I, ser I have a child, you know, I have a, I'm in a mixed relationship, but there's certain things that are, that are true, and Sandra can relate to those, some of those things too, so it's like, I, th I think it's just sort of growing, growing in this world together as post-immigrant children, we, ha we share an experience. Other questions? So, questions for Ty. Hey. I, I loved all the emotions you had in the movie, it was awesome. Thank you. I really kind of sunk into your character like that and felt for you. And I was wondering, so, so like, does that work? Do you love doing that sort of thing, or is it like, how do you how do you view going through all that stuff? And because you got to do so many, uh -huh. is there something that you haven't done that you would love to do? Some kind of emotional play. <laughs> I love what I do. I mean, really, uh, I think. When the, when the day comes, when the good Lord says, I'm, you come with me, I'm probably going on my way to a set, <laughs> costume fitting or something. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how to do anything else. So really, that's my why. That's why. 
because I love what I do. And it, it does take a toll. I mean, it's not like, you know, you know it's, n it's no free ride. <laughs> you go through these things, and because you do it so that you have communion with your audience, because we're not there to share, it's not theater. I'm not standing up here, you know, doing a play, which, you know, I've spent many years doing. And, and there is that element of, you know, connection between your audience and you uh, immediately. We can't do that. I mean, this film was made last February, you know, 2017. So we need to be even more vigilant about what we do and how we feel. And that the filmmaker captures it, you know, on film. So, so that's really a, an important step for us. So hopefully, you know, when Sandra is, uh, is the De Niro, and hopefully I could be the Pacino <laughs> uh, of the, uh, uh, the experience. So really, uh, I really love the experience of, of doing, sharing these things, and, and to be moved in some way, you know, or whichever way, laughter, you know, tears, or, or just, <laughs> you know, whatever it may be, I, I, I think, um, it, and it's endless, because you, you can't bring the same bag of tricks to everything. You, you can't do that, so, so hopefully every time you guys come out and see something that we do, and it will be a fresh experience, and say, ah, that guy's different, oh, this guy's different, oh, oh it's the same guy, oops. <laughs> no, but really, I mean, I think that, that's the, really the, uh, the ultimate goal, really, yeah. Oh, you have one more really uh, hard question. He asked you what you'd want to do if you could do anything, oh, right? Yeah, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really hard one. That is hard. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. More comedy. More comedy. I, people just, I don't know. They, they like me to. Musical. Yeah. Me, I've, done a, I've done musical. Musicals are really hard. Musicals are really hard. I mean, that, that's something that's. A, I, I've done that, and, and I'm not quite sure I want to do that again. <laughs> if anything, that, that would be something I might not want to do again. Yeah, I mean, really, musicals are really hard. I mean, you have so many costume changes, and it's quick. You really have to run in and out, up and down, you know, all across the stage, and, and, and come out, and, you, and you're like, <laughs> and you sing, and laugh, and smile. And it, it's hard, it really is. It sounds like you really want to do it. I mean, yeah. you're just like, no, 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 that's enough. <laughs> all right, so we have time for one more question. Uh, in the back. She does say ba once. She calls him dad. Right. Um, it's mm -hmm. two. It's two factors. It's yes. I mean, I'll start talking Cantonese with my mom, and then inevitably it becomes Chinglish, where it's just a mix. And then if I'm really excited and need to communicate, often it's in English, because she understands. But also, Sandra doesn't. Her Cantonese isn't great. She's Korean, right? So, I, I just cut that out. Like it made it easier than. She's learned Cantonese words before for different films. She's learned different language. Christina Yang, I think, is Chinese, right? The character of Grey's Anatomy. But I, but uh, it was also the fact that we didn't have time to teach her more. That's the five million dollar budget. <laughs> Well, I think on that note, uh, we, we, I'm sure we all want to say hello to, to our, our, our talent here today. Amina, do you want to say anything else? You mentioned Netflix already, but in terms of how yeah. we can spread the word. Please tell people. Nobody knows it's on Netflix. <laughs> Nobody knows. So uh, it's just fresh out. Talk about it. If you talk about it like you just saw a Ryan Gosling movie, but her name was Maria, that's going to change things. right? Instead of going, it's a marginalized movie about uh, Chinese. Forget it. It's Maria Wang, ladies and gentlemen. She's a superhero. So, thank you. All right, thank you all for being here. We're actually going to have a reception afterwards at BJ's where they have happy hour deals all night. So you can ask the bartender for a red wine and Coke if you'd like. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> <laughs>